It's impossible to look away. It's like watching a train wreck. I survived a serial killer, true crime series, medical dramas, 9-11, mass shootings, unexpected Hollywood deaths, rubbernecking at a car accident, Damar Hamlin. Each one of these triggered our morbid curiosity, but they also each involved medical PTSD. It wasn't until the early 1980s that PTSD was even acknowledged, and it took until the early 2000s for people to accept that PTSD can also be the result of medical trauma. A large portion of the entertainment we consume goes towards satisfying our morbid curiosity. When that happens through harmless actions like historical information or willing accounts from victims, no harm, no foul. However, when our curiosity causes harm to someone or triggers their PTSD, that's no longer entertainment. That's hurting someone who is already hurting. The difference can be such a fine line, but where is that line? Welcome to the Cook Who Can't Eat podcast, where we're making food, family, and life a little easier, one bite at a time. Make sure you stay tuned in to the end for this episode's meal idea or recipe. In January of 2023, just about everyone, including non-football fans, were called to the TV or the screen as we watched the worst thing possible happen to Damar Hamlin, and it happened on live television. Damar made a perfect hit. He stood up, clapped the back of his opponent, and then went down. And he did not move again for nine minutes. We all watched in horror as this played out on live TV, but as we continued to consume it over and over and over again, it actually took one of the NFL commentators saying, I don't have anything to say about this. I don't know why we're still watching it. I don't want to comment on this. For people to start realizing, ooh, maybe we shouldn't be watching this on repeat, but why was this consumed so massively and within minutes on every media outlet you could even possibly consider? Because we all have a very healthy dose of morbid curiosity. If we didn't, it wouldn't be such a huge part of the entertainment that we all consume. Let's be honest, we're all tuning in when victims like Elizabeth Smart or Bethany Hamilton or a 9-11 survivor tell their story. There are series out there called I Survived the Serial Killer or I'm a murderer. There are so many true crime series. And if they don't have enough true stories, there are billions of fictional ones for you. Now, why do we all have this prolific sense of morbid curiosity? Well, there's lots of theories, but it all kind of boils down to the fact that we're curious. We want to learn about something that is probably never going to happen to us. We want to understand what they went through or what that bad guy was thinking. There are some that just crave that scared or negative energy. Some feel that it's a great way to learn how to protect themselves or their family or even what they would do if something like that happened to them. Sometimes we all need to be reminded just how fragile life can be and that occasionally this world can be a very scary place. Most harmless versions of morbid curiosity are told after the fact, many times by the victims, a historian or documentary based off facts and court documents. Some can happen in real time and still be harmless. If we look at Damar, we watched as the Bengals players held and comforted the Bills players. We were able to watch two coaches who were in playoff games put their players first. That doesn't happen every day. And that was really amazing to watch. Feeling helpless, people were searching for ways to help and support Damar. So they even found his old GoFundMe account. Well, that goal of $2,500 was very quickly blown through. And I believe it's sitting now right around $10 million. That's amazing. We watched Cincinnati fans hosting and opening their homes and hearts to the Bills players. Cincinnati in general and the world embracing DeMar's family and the doctors and the medical staff that were working on him. It almost reminded me of early COVID days when cities would plan times where everyone would lean out their window and clap 
and cheer and say thank you to the medical professionals, first responders, and essential workers that were risking their lives so that we had what we needed. Morbid curiosity becomes harmful when you're invading someone's privacy, asking inappropriate questions, when you're re-victimizing them by playing footage or pressuring them. There's a story about Damar's little brother. They are very close. And when he hit that ground, that sweet boy got very emotional, which makes sense. All that boy was seeing was the repeat of his brother hitting the ground, but couldn't get any real information on what was happening. That was incredibly harmful to that little boy and other members of Damar's family. We had broadcasters and experts speculating on the kind of care Damar was getting, what could have caused this, what his care would look like afterwards, what his chances of survival were. None of that is helpful because they're not in the room. They're not treating him. They don't know the facts. So while morbid curiosity can be harmless, it can also cause a lot of harm. Most people that went through what Damar did would end up with medical PTSD. Typically, we hear about PTSD when it comes to soldiers, first responders, victims of crimes. You don't hear much about medical PTSD, but it's very prevalent and it's very dangerous. In early 2021, I was hospitalized. During my stay, I had to go through a lot of very painful procedures. What was happening to my body was awful and I had to be revived twice. Before I left the hospital, I asked my doctor, why don't I remember anything from X to Z? That whole area is just black. She said that what they had to do to my body and what was happening was violent and very painful. A lot of times your mind will block those things out to protect you. And that's okay. The second question I asked was, I have never had any issues with blood or wounds or anything like that. Why can I not look at my biggest wound? She actually walked over, grabbed her hand and said, Holly, because that's what tried to kill you. That is medical PTSD. It's the result of trauma experienced from a procedure, treatment, illness, hospitalization, or some combination thereof. Sufferers experience extreme terror, fear, distress, and avoidance of getting medical care, even in urgent situations. Medical community is still learning about medical PTSD. So the sufferer may not even know that that's what they have. They'll go in to get care and they're quickly labeled as anxious or hard to deal with when really they are so terrified that they don't know what to do with themselves. About three weeks after I got out of the hospital, I got sick again. I knew we had to go to the hospital. I knew it was bad. I knew we were heading down that path, but I wouldn't go. They finally convinced me to go. Once I got there and they were unloading me from the car, I had a massive panic attack. It was three weeks since I left this place, lucky to be alive, and here I am again. I was weaker, sicker, and I didn't know how or what was going to happen. Unfortunately, because I did have a panic attack when I got there, they labeled me as anxious. It drastically affected my medical care and almost cost me my life. But that's a story for another day. Before today, I could have counted on one hand the number of people that knew what happened to me in the beginning of 2021. Now, Damar's situation is very different because it all played out on national TV. Most people haven't and won't experience surviving death. So it makes us curious because it's really only the dead that know what happens after we die. One of the negative curiosities that I've seen with Damar Hamlin is actually right before the Super Bowl. In the pregame, Michael Shanahan was interviewing Damar. They talked about his recovery, his charity, the team, all of these wonderful things. Then he asked, do you remember standing back up after that hit? Now, what most people probably saw was a man pausing to think. But if you've ever had medical PTSD or any kind of what you probably saw was a man that looks scared, a face tightening, rapid eye movements, 
Yes. And when he finally said, that's not something I want to get into, his voice was a lot different than it had been the rest of the interview. Why? Because everything that Damar has been through is a lot to wrap your head around. I don't see how he wouldn't have some kind of PTSD. And that kind of a question pushes him right into a trigger. Now, I highly doubt that Michael Shanahan was trying to cause harm to DeMar Hamlin because when DeMar said no, Shanahan didn't ask follow-up questions, he didn't push, he just let it go, which was the right thing to do after asking the wrong question. If you know someone that's recently or in the last few years experienced medical trauma, they could have PTSD. Patients actually report having those feelings more than nine years after the initial incident. Here are a few things to watch for. Changes in sleep pattern. They can't fall asleep or they just want to sleep all the time. Nightmares. Avoidance. Depression. Refusal or lack of interest in self-care. Refusal to seek medical care even when it's a life or death situation. They're disconnecting from people and they're they're self-medicating with alcohol or drugs or maybe even messing around with their prescription medication. Are they unwilling to even acknowledge what happened? I am just now starting to try and get help. It's been two years since my first issue, and I can just now start talking about little parts and pieces of it. So how can you help? You can educate yourself on medical PTSD and their condition. Be supportive, not controlling. Listen, but don't question. I promise at some point they're going to want to talk. But the more you question, the less likely you'll be the one they talk to. Be patient. Everyone is doing this in their own time because wrapping your head around all of this is one heck of a task. Don't judge and don't set a timeline. Surviving death is not something that you should get over in a certain amount of time. Everyone's different. Every experience is different. Respect that. Learn their triggers. Figure out what it is in daily life that might trigger them and help them figure out how they can avoid them. Sometimes triggers are things you would never think of. The best thing you can do is find help. It is hard because there are not a lot of people who specialize in medical PTSD, but they are out there. If you love someone suffering from this, help them look because it's hard to find. It's hard to get into. Now, here's a big caution. You have to make sure that they're ready for it because if they're not ready, it's not going to be successful. If it took me two years, imagine how long it might take to mark. When he woke up, everyone was so excited and they were talking about all the things they couldn't wait for him to find out. Well, I could think, oh, please don't overwhelm him. Demar was going to have to deal with a lot. We can't all comprehend what all that means. Our brains they're just not wired for that. Trust me, at some point, anyone dealing with us, they're going to want to talk about it. So be there, listen, love and support them. That's really all anyone can ask for. I hope you remember that morbid curiosity is normal. It's part of our everyday world and even our entertainment when it's harmless. But please don't ever let your morbid curiosity hurt someone that's already hurting. If you're suffering, reach out to family member, friend, or even me. Someone is always going to be available to listen. For more information on medical PTSD, how you can help, and what to watch for, visit the blog and you'll find all your resources there. Up next, this episode's meal idea or recipe. Curious George always had the best adventures, and you could count on a banana being in his backpack no matter where he was. Tonight, grab a banana, some ice cream, the family, and your favorite toppings, and together, enjoy a banana split sundae. Life always feels a little bit easier when it tastes a little sweeter. Thank you for being here, my friend. I'm so glad you were able to join me. Make sure that you subscribe on your favorite podcast platform so you don't miss our next episode where we're going to talk about how most of us are ordering from the drive-thru all wrong. 